to Dr Claire Gerarda because she is currently recovering from contracting COVID-19 in New York and joins us live from her home in Kennington. And um, Dr Claire Gerarda, you're a former chair of the Royal College of GPs as well. Um, just tell us, how did you know you had COVID-19? Have you, you presumably were officially tested, that's how you know, but at what stage, what were the symptoms and how do you feel right now? Well, the symptoms, as they tell you on the tin, very high temperature, terrible sore throat, aching limbs and a dry cough. I did get tested. Uh, now we're not testing uh, people who, who aren't uh, in, in some of the high risk groups. And of course, it came up positive. I didn't need to be tested to know that's what I had. It was absolutely barn door. I'm now coming out the other end. And if you want to say what it's like, it's probably, you know, five rounds with Mike Tyson, the worst flu I've ever had. You know, it, it's horrible. But... But actually, sorry about this. No, you, but don't actually, worry, you can turn it off if you like. I, I have turned it off. But actually, you know, I'm through it the other side. And the message I want to give is that, you know, I'm 60. I'm not young. I'm young-ish. I feel young. But my body has fabulously built up a defence against this. It's not like a car which breaks down, which you have to get mended. Your own body does this. And I feel incredibly... Uh, I, I just think we, we underestimate our own strengths. We underestimate what we can do and what our own body can do. And I'm now through the other end. Clearly, I haven't got any underlying health conditions. I'm fit and well in other ways. But I think we need to just to accept that, yes, it is a grim illness, but I'm now round and through the other way. I mean, it's very good news that you are and you do. You look a lot younger, I have to say, than you in your stated age. <laughs> For a lot of elderly people, it's a very worrying time. We do seem to be pursuing a different path in this country to many other mm -hmm. countries, if not almost every other country. What do you think of the strategy that the government is currently deploying? Well, clearly I'm a GP, I'm not a, an immunologist and I'm not an epidemiologist and I'm not in COBRA. So I have to say that I accept the advice of our government and are influenced by, uh, and informed by our scientists. I have to. Why can I second guess them? I'm not there receiving all the detailed information that they're receiving from various sources. I'm also not sitting in their day long meetings wondering what response we should have. So I accept the advice that they give us. I do also accept that WHO, as I've heard, have said that each country is different. They have given uh, guidelines. Guidelines aren't tram lines. This is, and each country then has to interpret how they respond in their own way, depending on their own their own uh, conditions and their own situation. But the countries that seem to have got on top of it have deployed a, a multi-pronged, very aggressive strategy of intensive testing and also intensive yes. social distancing. And at the moment, we seem to have abandoned all testing, unless you're uh, seriously ill with this, which lends well, itself to the obvious question. Well, we have, they're not testing anyone. Yeah, they're saying to stay yeah, at home, right? Piers, we haven't abandoned. We're doing something much better, actually. We're doing surveillance testing, which is much more accurate. Since I've been unwell, I've heard of three people who have probably had corona, probably had COVID-19. They haven't gone anywhere near health professionals, anywhere near testing. So they'll be missed in any of the testing. The, yes. the best way to look at tests now is to do it in a, in, in a systematic, scientific, epidemi epidemiological way of where you sample populations, which is what we do with the flu every single year which is what, how you get the figures for the flu. We don't test every single person that comes into my surgery with flu-like symptoms with the normal seasonal flu. We have index practices who, where, where they are tested, where we do sampling frames. So we are testing. And I think it's really important that we give accurate information, if you're going to give ac information at all, rather than what the man on the Clapham Omnibus said or the man down the pub, now that pubs are still open. So we are testing. Uh, we have got a response. The response may be carry on and, and keep a distance, but that is the response. So I think it is important that, as you've heard earlier in your, as I've heard earlier in your program, we trust those that are making the decisions on our behalf. We don't second guess them. Of course, you have to challenge them. That's your job, Piers. Mm. But I think we can't second guess them. You're not in those meetings. You're not privy to all the information, and neither am I. I think that's perfectly fair. And once again, let me just stress that I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying there is an inconsistent approach around the world and it seems to be, that we, it seems to be that we are the outlier and that just raises but concerns. You don't know 
Oh, you don't have no idea what's going on in 150 or however many other countries. Well, I know so that again, most of them are now in lockdown and we're not at all. Well, in fact, we're not doing any social distancing whatsoever. And I don't, again, I don't understand why we're not. Well, we are keeping socially distant. We're saying that if you've got an infection, which I have, I've had to keep socially distant from my husband, who is, is in the same building. We're also saying that for the elderly, because they're much more at risk, we have to, they will want to think about keeping away from places Should that may... Should people be going to pop concerts with 12,000 people all crammed up together? I mean, that seems to me lunacy. I'm, I'm not I'm not an expert in this, but when I was very unwell, I heard I heard a lot of TV and radio, and thank you very much, media, for carrying on, because it, we really do need familiar faces. Yeah. And I heard the argument, much better to be in an open air, uh, open air space uh, where you've got you know a few people around you rather than tucked up in a pub. Now, actually, we're closing pubs as well. But I'm not an expert on this, but what I am okay. saying is we have to rely on those that are giving us the information yes. and not second-guess them. OK, uh, listen, I really appreciate you uh, contacting us. Glad you're making... Uh, you're, you're recovered now, are you? You're over it? I think, by, I think by the middle of the week and then hopefully back at work next week wow. to help all of you who may need my help. Well, so. the health of all... I think everyone in the health service is hugely important right yeah. now. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the programme.